Okay, in this video, I want to get a little bit into EQ and effects, a little bit of looping, and uh, assigning things to your MIDI controller. So let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to try to do is we're going to stay on the path of the traditional DJing style. And in, in a traditional DJ setup, each track or each channel would normally have an EQ. So Ableton has their EQ3, which gives you the, the low, mid, and, get, and high gain. So when you pop that over on both tracks, and you just simply drag it up to where the name is, drop it in, and now you've got EQ on both tracks. And you just need to assign that to MIDI, which we'll do in just a second. The next thing I, I'll do is um, maybe a flanger. Let's let's go ahead and just drag in a flanger. Doesn't really matter what the effect is, but a lot of times people like to use chorus or flange or whatever. And I'm just going to hit Command C. It'd be Control C on your PC. And then I can go ahead and Control V or paste the same thing in here. So now we got EQ and flange. Now what I'm going to want to do is set up the flange just so all I've got to do is just turn it on and off to get a certain effect. So let me go ahead and uh, I'll just turn this one off and play this here. Okay, that's good. And actually what I'll just do is um, I'll just copy that and paste it over this one. So they're both kind of set the same. I'll just delete that. Okay. Okay, next I want to add some sends. So what I'm going to do is we've got two, two send returns here. And as you can see over here, these are our sends that correspond to whatever effects are in here. So I'm going to drag in a simple delay, and I'll drag in a reverb. And let me tell you, the reason why you want to use return effects in some cases instead of just dropping the effect or the, you know, the delays in here is because if I were to drop a delay onto this track, all right, Let's say I have a, a long delay, all right? Okay, so there, there's a long delay going on, okay? But the second I turn the volume down, that delay is gone. So if I'm mixing a track and I want to do a quick little carryover where I add an effect, mix this out real quick, and then that effect carries over while the next song's playing, it's not going to happen inside the track because this volume controls the volume of all the effects. Whereas if you have the effect set to a return track, let me uh, let me set the feedback high and I'm going to set the wet all the way up. And I'll just put that on a quarter note. So if I have a delay here, I could turn this down and it still carries over when I go into the next song. So that's the reason why you would use a return. And I, it's the same reason why I would put a reverb or something. It's just simply for the carryover. Okay, so now what you'll want to do is, in my case, I'm using the APC40. But, you know, whatever controller works for you is fine. But you're probably going to want a controller that has some knobs, some buttons, maybe some faders. So in order to assign um, some of these parts, so what, what we want to assign is the low, mid, and gain for each of our tracks here and here. So you want to come over here to MIDI and then go ahead and turn that on. And now it's just as simple as clicking on what you want to control and then twisting the knob. So as you can see, I twist the knob and a number comes up. And then I'll click another one, twist that knob, and another number comes up. Click this one, another knob comes up. And I'll come over to this track 
and I'll sign these. And now what I want to do is uh, find a button and I'm just going to assign this to an on or off. Uh, it looks like I accidentally assigned something which I didn't want to. So we'll click there and assign this button here. No, actually, let me assign that button. Great. And then I'll come over back to here. And I'll sign there. Okay. So now I've got an on and off, and I've got my EQs here. Now, the APC40 automatically sets these to sends. So I've already got buttons that are auto mapped to that, and I've got faders that are auto mapped to the volume here. So I don't need to do that, but if you don't have an APC40 or you don't have something that's automatically set up for Ableton, then you'll just want to do the same process. You know, find a couple knobs that you can assign these to as well. And then once you're done, you just turn off your MIDI. And now I've got my volume set here. Great. My EQs. So don't want that sign like that. I might have goofed somewhere, so. Let me go ahead and take care of that right now. Looks like that one's going a little out of control. No problem. So we got that, that, and that's good. Okay, now we're good. So that's a good thing too, is uh, it's so easy to set up. Is If you make a little goop, all you've got to do is just come in here to MIDI. You could just click and twist the correct knob and it'll change it. Or you can click on it and hit delete and it'll remove uh, any type of setting that you don't want. All right, so the next thing that we're going to want to do is I like to set my gains to a maximum of zero. Okay, now you can set them all the way up to 6 dB if you want. And that just means that it's going to be 6 dB louder when you're mixing. So you just want to make sure that you're not going to over peak your tracks when you mix them in. But what I will do is I'll come into to MIDI here and as you can see this this shows our settings here. And I'm going to set the top setting here. See this this is the the minimum and here's the maximum. And I'm going to set all of these to 0. And I'll tell you why I do that in just a second. So now when I twist my knob, you see that it doesn't go any higher than zero. So it's going to be very easy to, for me to find that point. If zero were, were right here, it'd be really difficult when mixing to try to find a zero point, And you'd always be off by a little bit. So I like just setting a maximum to zero and then just use reductive EQing. Okay, so now, now that we've got that set up and we've got our flanger set up on both the tracks. We can go ahead and get to mixing. So what I'm going to do is I'll turn the volumes down here, set the first one up, and I'll just launch this first clip. Well, actually, let me turn both of those off. So we'll start with this track. And on this track, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, turn all the EQs down, okay? I'll bring the volume up and then I will hit start. So this track is playing but you can't yet hear it because all the EQs are down. So now I'll start bringing in the EQ here and at the same time I'm bringing down the EQ on the other track. And now as I bring in the bass, I'll slowly drop the volume of the first one. And there we go, we've done a mix. And over here, even though you can't see it, 
you can see the the changes in the in the MIDI. With the flange, it's just a matter of uh, I've got a little on and off switch. So if I want to use flange or something like that, I just do that. If I want to use delay into another track, and I'll I'll just do something really simple here. I'm not going to use any EQ. I just just for this example. And as you could hear, the delay just kind of blended into the next song. So that's just some subtle thing that you can do. Obviously, you could set different delays if you want, you know, different timings or whatever. But that's essentially the way that you would use it. So the next thing I want to show you is looping. And what you're going to want to do is down here, you'll see you've got your loop on or off. And then you've got these two little position markers. Uh, that both say set. So what you can do, go into your MIDI here and then come down and what I will usually do is uh, go ahead and set that, set this, and then I also set something to this here. So basically the way it works let me turn this off real quick, is when I click on this one, it's going to turn on the loop and then also start the loop. When I hit this one, it will end the loop and then it'll loop at that point. And then it'll continue looping until I turn the loop back off. So let me show you how that works. Okay, so now I'm going to start a loop, there we go, and then I'm going to end the loop, and now we've got this loop in here, and that'll continue for as long as we want, and then anytime I want to release the loop, I just hit the other button, and off it goes. So once you assign those, that's a very easy way to loop a certain section of a song while you mix another part of the song in. And what's great about this is you've only got to do it to one clip. And then whatever clip you have open is the clip that will be affected. So now that we've got this one open, I can go ahead and I don't really need sound to show you, but we've got this going across set the loop point, now it's looping, and then I can exit the loop at any time. Another important thing that I should mention is up here you're going to see where it says one bar. But this is considered your your global quantizing and it's set to one bar. So because of that your looping is going to loop in one bar intervals. Whereas if I were to set this to four bars, for example, or let's just do eight bars just to make it easier to notice. Now if I start this track here, I can go ahead and punch in and then punch out. And as you can see, it does it to the closest eight bars. But my advice to you is just to keep it at one bar. So I hope that helps quite a bit. Now if you want to assign these to your QWERTY keyboard, you know, your, the keyboard that you type on, there's one change that you have to do. Instead of going to your MIDI, you would go to key, but then you would also need to turn this keyboard off. And then you could assign keys to each one of these different things, and that'll work just the same. But I would suggest if you can, stay with MIDI and use a controller because it, it'll be a simpler setup because there's certain things that you lose the ability to do when you turn this off here. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in another video and we'll take this a little further.